Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Reeti and I am back with another lecture in the DBMS series. So in the last couple of lectures, we learnt about first, second and third normal form. In this particular video, we would be learning about a very important concept which would help us in understanding about the other normal forms as well. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let's just re-revise some older concepts and then we will switch to the decomposition. So consider there is a relation R. Now this particular relation R has some rows, has some columns and has some data present in it. Consider that there is a data redundancy or you can say data duplicacy which is present in this particular table or this particular relation. So what we will do is we will normalize the relation. So what we do in normalization is we break or decompose the given relation into two or more sub relation so that the data redundancy or data duplicacy is decreased. So we have broken it into R1 and R2. Now this particular decomposition can be of two types. First is a lossy decomposition and second one is a lossless decomposition which we will be knowing in this particular video. So in normalization we generally break or decompose the table into two or more sub tables. Now consider if there is a relation R, lossy decomposition occurs when a relation R is decomposed or broken into two or more relation but the data is lost. So basically in this kind of decomposition the data is lost and the original relation R can't be reconstructed by joining these decomposed relation. So if there is a relation R which is broken or decomposed into R1 and R2 and consider that if I want to find some data which is present in R1 as well as R2 I perform a join operation between them and after performing the join operation I get R3. So according to the definition of lossy decomposition R3 would never be equal to R which was our base table. So some data is lost and some data may be repeated as well. So the data which is present in R3 is not equal to the data which is present in R. Basically data is not preserved. So there are two rules for decomposition to be lossy. The first rule is some data from the original relation R is lost after decomposition. So R3 is not equal to R. Second is join of the decomposed relation R1, R2 till till Rn if there are n number of relation is not equal to the original relation R. So after getting decomposed and performing the join operation, the resulting relation is not equal to the base relation or you can say the relation R which was the original table. So let's understand lossy decomposition from an example. So consider that there is a relation R which is having attributes as A, B and C. So this is the relation R which is having attributes A, B and C. So what we will do in step one is we will decompose the relation based on any attribute. So we can choose any attribute and we can decompose the table based on that attribute. Consider that we are choosing B. So we'll decompose the table into A, B and B, C. So for now, let's use B as the common attribute. Decomposed relations are R1, R2. R1 is having A and B and R2 is having B and C. And the value remains the same. So A is 1 and 4, A is 1 and 4, B is 2 and 2, C is 3 and 6. So all the values remain the same. It's just that we have broken the table vertically from B and B is the common attribute which is in the relation 1 as well as in the relation 2. Now step 2 is let's perform a natural join between R1 and R2. So what is this natural join? Join is basically a cross product plus some condition. So whenever we perform a cross product and then we provide some condition and on basis of that we filter the data we perform join. Now coming to the natural join. So what happens in natural join is we do the cross product. And then the condition in natural join is that the attribute which is present in relation 1 should be equal to the attribute which is present in relation 2. So on basis of this we will filter out the data. So let's perform a natural join between R1 and R2. So what we will do is first we'll do a cross product. So for the cross product the first row of R1 will be cross product with both the rows of R2. Then the second row of R1 will be cross product with both the rows of R2. And then we will filter the data based on the condition. So what we will do is first we will note down the values of R1 that is 1 and 2. Now 1 and 2 will be cross product with 2 and 3 of R2. And then 1 and 2 will again be cross product with 2 and 6. Now coming to 4 and 2, so 4 and 2 will be cross product with 2 and 3 and again 4 and 2 will be cross product with 2 and 6. Now what we will do is we will follow the condition that the common attribute should be equal. So R1 of B should be equal to R2 of B. So this is A, B and this is B, C. So let's see if R1 of B is equal to R2 of B, yes, so this will be in our final result. 
coming to this r1 of b is equal to r2 of b yes so this will also be in our final result coming to third r1 of b is equal to r2 of b yes so it will be also displayed in final result coming to the last one r1 of b is equal to r2 of b yes so this will also be displayed in the final result so the final relation we will get after the join is 1 2 3 1 2 6 4 2 3 and 4 2 6 now this was our original relation which has 1 2 3 4 5 6 and this is the relation after we perform the natural join so here you can see 1 2 3 which is present here as well but coming to 4 5 6 it is not present here so we can see that data is lost and we can also see some additional fields which is present here so we can clearly see that r3 is not equal to r because some data is also lost and some extra data is present so this is a lossy decomposition so we saw in the lossy decomposition that our data was also lost and there was some extra set of data which was also present but now we have to make sure that even if the decomposition happens the data is not lost so that is a lossless decomposition so whenever we see a lossless decomposition it basically means whenever the decomposition happens and if there is a join operation which is performed between both of these relations or the decomposed relation we don't lose the data the data is preserved so let's see that how we can ensure that the decomposition is a lossless decomposition so the first pointer is divide or decompose the table on the basis of candidate key or super key present in the relation so that there is no duplicacy so as we can also see that in the lossy decomposition there was some duplicacy there was some extra data which was present so we have to make sure the attribute on basis of which we are dividing the table should either be a candidate key or should be a super key so that this unique identifier will help me to eliminate the duplicate data Now coming to the second pointer for a decomposition to be lossless first is r1 union r2 should be equal to r so whenever we do a union between the decomposed table it should always result into the original table now the second one is r1 intersection r2 should be equal to the common attribute so consider if our relation is broken down into r1 and r2 and r1 is having ab as the attribute and r2 is having bc as the attribute so whenever we do a intersection between them it should result into the common attribute which is present between this relation so r1 intersection r2 should result into the common attribute third pointer is to ensure that a decomposition is lossless a common approach is to use the dependency preservation property now we will learn about this dependency preservation property in next set of videos but for now you can keep these two pointers in mind so that a decomposition is not lossy it's lossless now coming to the lossless decomposition so consider that there is a relation r so in lossless decomposition it ensures that when a relation r is decomposed or break into two or more relation no data is lost that is the original relation r can be again reconstructed by joining these decomposed relation so if there is a relation r which is decomposed into r1 and r2 and whenever we perform a natural join or a join between them if we get r3 so the data which is present in r is equal to the data which is present in r3 so the data is preserved and we get the original table after performing the join operation so there are two rules for a decomposition to be lossless first one is all data in the original relation r should be preserved after decomposition and second is join of the decomposed relations is equal to the original relation so let's understand from an example for the lossless decomposition so consider there is a relation r having attributes as a b and c and the candidate key here is given as a so what we will do in the lossless decomposition is we will divide the table on the basis of the candidate key and that would be a common attribute so let's decompose the relation based on the candidate key or super key of given relation so the decomposed relation would be r1 which will be having a and b and r2 which would be having a and c since a is the super key or candidate key so this would be a common attribute now this are the relations r1 and r2 so let's perform a natural join between them now whenever we perform a natural join between two relations what we do is we do the cross product among two relations and then we perform a condition between them that is the common attribute in r1 should be equal to the common attribute in r2 so first we'll do the cross product so first this row will be multiplied with all these rows so 1 2 is multiplied with 1 3 then again 1 2 is multiplied with 4 and 6 now coming to the second row so 4 and 5 will be cross product with 1 and 3 and then again 4 and 5 will be cross product with 4 and 6 
Now let's check for this condition where R1 of A should be equal to R2 of A. So this is R1 of A and this is R2 of A. So R1 of A is equal to R2 of A. Yes, so 1, 2, 1, 3 will be in the final result. R1 of A is equal to R2 of A. No, so this should be discarded from the final result. R1 of A is equal to R2 of A. No, so this should also be discarded from the final result. R1 of A is equal to R2 of A. Yes, this should be present in the final result. So if you see the original relation, it has 1, 2, 3. 3, 4, 5, 6 and if you see the relation after natural join it also has 1, 2 and 3 and 4, 5 and 6. So the relation which we get after performing a natural join on the table is same as the original relation. So in step 2 let's perform a natural join between R1 and R2 and whenever we do R1 natural join R2 we get the original relation back. So consider this is a relation R3. So R3 is equal to R because all the data which is present in R is present in R3. So that is why this is a lossless decomposition. So this was all about lossy and lossless decomposition in this particular video. I hope you like this video. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're someone who is new to my channel, can go ahead and watch out the tech content first. And if you find it useful, can go ahead and subscribe. Also, if you have not followed me on my social media handles, you can go ahead and follow. The links are in the description. Till then, take care. Keep learning, keep growing, keep smiling. Bye all.